Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Saturday, September 23rd, 2017 edition of VR News. Let's jump into our first story. Ford, as in the car company, along with other car companies and businesses in general, have been exploring the possibilities offered by virtual reality and augmented reality devices. Ford just completed a pilot phase where, to a limited degree, they were using the HoloLens. Happy enough with the results that they are going to ramp up that use and have designers use the HoloLens as an alternative during the traditional pencil design phase. The advantage for designers and engineers being able to quickly prototype or overlay design ideas and just get some real quick feedback on how things look so they can progress onwards. It's going to allow them to streamline processes and reduce costs and also allow for tangent ideas. Ideas that may normally, with traditional methods, be far too cost prohibitive to even entertain. With the hollow lens and the quick prototyping that it affords, they can do that much quicker and determine quicker if there's a possible benefit there. So there's a video playing in the background. If you're more interested in this, the link for that video below, you can get some additional details, uh, interviews with engineers and designers on the HoloLens product and how they're using it. Next up, Oculus founder Palmer Lucky appearing on stage with HTC Vive during the Tokyo Game Show 2017. There was a panel discussing a wide variety of topics surrounding VR in Japan and VR Global. During the appearance, he stated, I have a new company. I can't talk about my projects too much, but I'm still working in the VR industry on some very exciting things. Now, there were some other articles talking about him working with neural VR, HMDs, etc., but not a lot of details forthcoming. When there's more, we'll dig into that again. This next story, very cool in that we haven't seen really that I can think of, and I may have missed it, you guys can correct me in the comments, but examples of MOBA games in virtual reality. I know there's examples of RTS, there's quite a few actually. Well, PlayStation VR users are going to, in 2018, get a MOBA RTS hybrid game called Dark Eclipse. Now, the unfortunate thing here, and to me, almost as unfortunate as exclusivities can be, and you guys know my thoughts on that. Well, why release something for one region and not others? It just, to me, seems like such an archaic way of going about it. But hey, that's what they're going to do. 2018 is going to see a Japanese launch of this title. No word yet on a release elsewhere. So what's the game about? Well, developer Sunsoft states that you are going to be able to choose three characters from a roster of 20 that you then do battle with. You're going to have terrain and logistics that need to be factored in strategy-wise. No word on price, and like I said, other than Japan, and even there, no firm release date. And our last story, end things on a positive note. A team of researchers has developed a technique for using virtual reality headsets to view 3D models of genetic DNA. We've seen examples of virtual reality working, you know, within the medical industry. This another one and a very, very hopeful one. Data from genome sequencing, information about DNA interactions and microscopy are all brought together in simulations. Professor Jim Hughes, who's an associate professor of genome biology at Oxford University, said the following. By combining data on the genome sequence with data on gene interactions, we can create 3D models that show where regulatory elements and the genes they control sit relative to each other. It makes it easier to understand the processes going on within a living cell. And... What's so cool about this, in my opinion, is how the technology of VR works with a strength in all humans. One of our positive traits, because we sure have a hell of a lot of negative ones. So there's 37 trillion cells in the human body, and each of those holds two meters 
of DNA within its nucleus. So being able to visualize these arrangements plays to a strength that we have as humans, and that is pattern recognition. So what they're doing right now, these researchers, they're using these simulations for tests involving diabetes and MS. And I've said before, my father, he's in the late stages of Parkinson's. These diseases are freaking cruel. And to be able to use the technology that we otherwise use for gaming or multimedia for a purpose like this, well, it's just freaking cool and absolutely needed. Well, guys, that is it for the news on this Saturday. Midway to weekend, make Sunday count, guys. As always, cheers.